Listen to the sound of that crackling. Practically orchestral, my friends. We are making the crispiest crackling slow roasted pork belly and we're gonna drizzle it with a homemade spiced plum sauce. And to cut through all that richness, we want a tangy Asian coleslaw. That's right, my friends, I'm taking care of your Christmas spread this year. Welcome to Marion's Very Merry Christmas. Okay guys, so it's been kind of a weird year. Um, I'm not sure wherever you are in the world, I'm wishing that you are having a safe, uh, very happy holiday season. Uh, and if I can help you out with a little bit of joy today, then it would be my pleasure to do that. Uh, we are gonna be making one of my all time favorite things to cook in the holiday season, and that is crispy roast pork. This version is really beautifully slow roasted so you get kind of like the crispy happening on the top and you get that really juicy soft meat on the bottom. Perfection. So what you don't want to be doing on Christmas Day is like totally stressing out. So you want to choose a menu that allows you to do as much of like, you know, the hard stuff the day before. So I have a little cheat sheet for you guys. Skip to this time code at the end of the video and I will have a step-by-step, -step, okay, do this, this, this the day before, do this, this, this day of. Easy. First up, we are gonna be doing a crispy crackling pork belly. Yes, this one, my friends, all the crunch, but then all that really soft, juicy meat underneath because I've got a super special technique for preparing and slow cooking your pork. Let's get right into it straight away. First of all, we need to cut to yesterday, the night before Christmas, if you like. So guys, let's talk about pork belly first of all. Now, uh, in Thailand actually, we call pork belly mu sam chan, which is quite interesting because that means like pork three levels, which I think is cool because what you want are lots of levels. You want levels of fat, you want levels of meat, certainly. You don't want all fat um, and you don't want all meat either. Make sure you get a good piece where you've got a nice balance of those levels, um, if you like. That's why I like to think about it anyway. Uh, meat and fat and um, Look, you can size this to how you like. So I'm doing like a big, this is like a 2.5 kilo piece. Ask your butcher to cut it to size if you want it smaller or larger. This one will probably do about six people. So the other thing about Christmas time is you've got a whole bunch of people coming over for the big lunch and the big dinner. Uh, but you know, budget wise, it's something you've got to kind of think about. Uh, you know, you don't want to be serving a big eye fillet for everyone or a standing rib roast. Um, you know, you can get quite a lot of servings out of a big slab of pork belly. It's rich, so you don't need a huge amount per person. Uh, and it is a cut that's a lot cheaper than some of those more expensive you know, pieces of meat. So a good choice for Christmas or the holidays. Uh, okay, so the way we prepare it though, uh, you need to start the day before. And um, the whole idea here is that I wanna get um, uh, as much sort of salting and drying as I can into that pork skin. That's gonna give us the best amount of crunch. So let's start off with the scoring first of all. Um, now. You need some school tools here. <laughs> we're not artsy and crafting. We're not crafting and artsing or artsing and crafting. We're not doing arts and craft today. <laughs> but we do, this is the way I like to do it. Stanley knife, um, much sharper than your average home kitchen knife and a ruler. You want to just put your ruler down and use that Stanley knife to score straight into the skin. And I like to do like half centimeter kind of intervals here. And you're looking to make sure that you're cutting through the skin. Uh, you don't want to cut all the way through the fat and into the meat. You just kind of want uh, the skin and the fat to get nicked by that knife. Now the reason I like to do this, because even when I bought my pork belly from my butcher, he did offer to score it, but I do find, um, unless you have a very patient butcher, <laughs> that there's often just not enough scoring. Uh, the reason why we want so much scoring is that you want as much um, sort of you want as many openings as you can to allow the fat to come up from underneath the pork while it's cooking. And then that fat will cook uh, and spread onto the top layer of pork and get everything really crunchy. So yes, there is method to the madness always. Okay, now we've got the scoring done. Let's get onto some seasoning. 
I'm going to use a mixture of salt and five spice here. I love a Chinese style five spice pork. To me it has such a celebratory kind of fragrance and aroma. Uh, so I start off with a little bit of salt, a little bit, a fair bit of salt. <laughs> It's such a terrible, it's so bad, isn't it? Like everyone, every kind of, you know, cook that does a show or chef on a cooking show always says a little bit of this, a little bit of that. This is a lot. A lot of salt and some Chinese five spice. Look, if you want to have a go at making your own homemade Chinese five spice, I've got a video on how to do that as well. Store-bought is totally fine though as well. So that goes in. Now flip that pork over because I want this lovely five spice salt only on the meat part. So just start sprinkling that over. And you're going to need to do a little massaging here. Just really rub that salt and that spice all over that meat. Okay, so my family is half Thai, half Australian. So our Christmases are quite often half Asian, half Australian. <laughs> uh, we love to have, you know, a glazed ham, a roast turkey, but we also love to have Asian flavors. So what could be more amazing and impressive than a sort of Chinese inspired roast crispy pork with that Chinese five spice fragrance, you know, all of that just, it says, holidays, it says Christmas, it says family to me. Um, I love serving this one at Christmas. I hope your family loves it as much as mine. Okay, flip that over. Now the next thing we want to do here is make sure that our skin is really super dry, dry at all stages of this cooking process. Uh, so I'm going to get some paper towel and just wipe off Wipe off any of that spice that's on the top as well because the spice can, we're going to go really high heat on the top of this pork belly so the spice can burn. Um, so I like to get rid of any of that. Now really get in here and make sure that you're wiping off any moisture. So moisture when it comes to crispy crackling, moisture is your enemy. Any of that kind of liquid is going to stop that fat from crisping up. All right, now we just want plain salt on the top. So two reasons for doing the salt here on the top. Uh, one, salt is good, good flavour, and you know, to me, crispy pork crackling always has like a, you know, it's salty and you know, crunchy. But also the salt's going to help to draw out the moisture from that pork skin. And the more we can draw out the moisture, the crispier we're going to get. Okay, just rub that in a little. Now this guy needs a little beauty sleep in the fridge, uncovered, uh, that way we're getting more of that moisture kind of evaporating off in the cool fridge and we're going to leave that overnight. Your patience will be rewarded. See you tomorrow. Ho, 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 ho. All right, so pork belly has had its little time in the fridge and look, it's looking pretty dry to me right now. There is just a few little pockets of moisture here. So I wanna get a paper towel and really just make sure this is uber, uber dry. Couple more set up things before we get the pork in the oven. So I like to cook the pork on a rack just to elevate it above the bottom of the tray. So to make sure we don't get any kind of sticking issues though, I just like to lightly brush that with some oil or just paper towel it with some oil. Now the reason the roasting rack is a good idea is it allows the hot air to circulate all around the pork and you don't kind of get hot spots from the pork sitting on the hot tray. Now pork goes on top. And we're going to do a two-stage cooking process. So first of all, I want to take care of getting that meat really nice and tender and soft and melting, uh, as well as rendering some of the fat that's underneath the skin. So we want to go really low and slow for the first three hours. Yes, three hours, and you will have to put up with the amazing porky smell filling your entire house. Then we're going to come back and finish off the crackling. While your pork is in the oven, you can make this really beautiful homemade plum sauce, but you could also do this the day before, so that means you've got less things to do on Christmas Day. This keeps really well in the fridge. All right, guys, sauce. Okay, so I, even me, like I don't like to have that pressure of making like the pan sauce while 
Uncle Mary or wait, no, Uncle Uncle Joe, Auntie Mary. <laughs> that was a bit. Well, you could have an Uncle Mary. I don't know, but um, <laughs> I don't want to be there with the pressure on everyone looking while I'm trying to make the pan sauce, and you know that's when you're going to get lumpy sauce, right? So. This one's great because it's a sauce that you can make the day before or even like two or three days before. It will keep really nicely in the fridge and the pressure will be off, but still super impressive. Um, so what we need to do is let's talk about some plums. First of all, we are making a spiced plum sauce. So these are some whole plums in juice or syrup. Either one is fine. You can get them in cans, you can get them in jars. Uh, you can even use cherries as well if you want to do a cherry version instead of the plum. What I like to do though is get a hold of our plums and take them out of the syrup first of all. I like to be delicate with these. They are quite soft and I do want to keep them in a nice shape for the end. Now all that juice or syrup that's left, that goes into my saucepan. And to that you want to add some sugar, some vinegar, a really good dash of fish sauce here. Now look, I know you might be thinking, wow, fish sauce, fruit, that's weird. Um, the fish sauce is going to give us a really salty plus umami savory flavor uh, to our sauce. I think it's kind of like the little hidden secret ingredient for this one. And then some spices. So I've got a cinnamon stick and some star anise. Now you want to bring this up to a little bubbling simmer and then cook it down for about 10 or 15 minutes. I want that sugar to dissolve and I want the whole thing to thicken up a little. It will thicken even more as it cools, but you do want quite a thick syrup to start with because the fruit, um, when we combine them together at the end, can make the syrup a little bit more watery. So we want to keep this nice and intense and thick. Now while that sauce is doing its thing, let's get these plums all prepped and ready. So I just like to take the pit out from the middle, cut around the sides, open it up, and then just place those into the bowl that you're going to serve the sauce in is the easiest thing. And if you're doing this the day before, a really good idea is to keep the plums and the syrup separate uh, until just before or the morning of when you're going to serve, just because I do find that all that juice from the plums does kind of leach out into the syrup. Not a bad thing, but uh, I just like to have a nice, rich, kind of thick syrup at the end. Now this is the kind of situation you're looking for with your syrup. I love that ruby red colour. So thick and glossy. Okay, so let that cool down a little bit. Now once that's nice and cool, you can pour that over your plums, unless of course you want to save it until later. I like to keep the spices in there as well. I think it looks really nice and it kind of tells people what the spiced flavor is in your lovely sauce. So there we go, that one is good to go. Time to do our beautiful, tangy, fresh Asian coleslaw. So guys, that pork is like uber rich. Amazing, but uber rich. So you kind of want something that's really sharp and tangy to cut through uh, all of that beautiful luscious lusciousness. <laughs> um, so that's why we're going with a non-mayo coleslaw, which is always interesting anyway because it's you know something a little bit different. Christmas salads. All right guys, so I know salads aren't like the sexiest thing in the world, but you know what, you've got to have some sides here. <laughs> that rich pork belly is crying out for something tangy and fresh. All those fresh herbs, that really beautiful tangy, just slightly spicy dressing. Um, really cool combo with that rich fatty pork. Look, loads of other things are going to go with this as well like I would probably serve like a sweet potato kind of casserole on the side as well um, some roasted pumpkin is nice we call them pumpkin in Australia you call them squash elsewhere anyway you know what I'm talking about <laughs> all those things wonderful roast potatoes also good um, mashed potatoes as well buttery mashed potatoes that would be good as well lots of different options here you can take your pick uh, we're going to make like a Vietnamese style nuoc chum dressing to start with. So I want some finely diced chilli. Look, you want to go with a mild chilli here. This is like a really large mild red chilli. So don't worry too much about, you know, harming Uncle Joe with the spice level <laughs> or Aunt Mary or whoever it is in your family that doesn't like chilli. Okay, and some garlic. Now in with our fish sauce. Sugar and some vinegar. 
Now just a final little bit of tang. I want some lime juice here as well. And then just give that a whisk. Now this you can make the day before as well. I'm all about the day before when it comes to Christmas. Uh, you can just keep this in the fridge and what I like to do is mix the coleslaw just before I'm ready to serve so I've got maximum freshness and crunch. Okay guys, pork currently smelling amazing. Uh, come in here and have a look at what's happening. So that, that all those little cuts that I told you guys to take the time to do, look at all that fat just kind of seeping out of there, bubbling away. So that's coming up and out onto the skin. That's what's gonna give us the crispy crunchiness. Uh, now, we're not quite there with the crunchiness, don't worry. Just be patient, trust me. But have a look at the meat here. That is like super soft, gelatinous, amazing already. <laughs> My goodness, that is so, makes me so happy. <laughs> but what we need to do now is get that crispy, crunchy crackling going on. So I want you to turn the oven up super high, like 200, 220 Celsius. Uh, get that pork back in there. Look, this could take uh, up to an hour, but keep coming back to check. I like to like sort of swivel the pork around every now and again in the oven, you know, give it some love and um, we'll see what happens. Okay, come and have a look at this slab of perfection right here. Look, I don't even need to say anything. I just think you guys should just have a listen to this. Okay, so I'm cracking into this pork because, you know, I want to show you guys how amazing it is and I want you to hear that crunch and that crispy, all that crispy magic. What I like to do on Christmas Day though is actually serve this as a whole big piece. I love to do, it's like a show. You put on the Christmas show when the pork comes out. I love to get my knife in there and do that cracking at the table so everyone's like, oh wow, oh wow. You know, that kind of reaction, that's the one you want. That sound amazing it is literally like music play the pork drums all day but what would be better would be actually eating the pork um, before we get slicing though and crackling and all the wonderful things let's just quickly mix our salad first of all so onto the rest of the coleslaw now I've got some Chinese cabbage here also known as wombok also known as Napa cabbage um, look any Crunchy cabbage will do. You could do red cabbage as well, white cabbage, green cabbage. Um, I don't mind at all. <laughs> now I also want to load this up with lots of fresh herbs. So let's go in with some coriander. Now you can leave this out if you're not a coriander person. Now some spring onion as well. And some mint. I really love the mint here. It just adds such a big pop of like freshness and all the kind of, I don't know, lovely Asian kind of flavors. It's just, to me, it's like, I don't know, it smells like Thailand, Vietnam, you know, love mint. So you just want lots of that dressing. Let's give that a toss. Look at that. It's like, Christmas already, it's so Christmassy. <laughs> I love it. I didn't even mean for that to happen, it just did, wow. <laughs> love it, oh, those fresh herbs, the smell, the pork, the fresh herbs, the chili, oh, I wish you guys were here right now. Um, now, we've also got our delicious sauce here as well. Time to get everything assembled and out onto a platter. Shall we get back to the pork? Now, here we go guys, some more crunch for you. Wow, so you have a look at how juicy and soft that meat is. I mean, this is, oh, that's why we do the slow cook and then we've got the crunchy everything. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's have another slice here. I like to pop everything out onto a platter. generous little drizzle of that tangy sweet spiced plum sauce. I like to pop down like a few of the plums and some of the spices as well. 
So there you go guys, slow roasted spiced pork with that super crispy crackling, uh, our beautiful plum sauce and that herbaceous tangy little salad. Let me get into the main event here. I need to try that pork or I'm literally gonna die. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, look at that crackle. Mmm. Do you know what happens there? The meat literally just like melts away into this like porky heaven. And then the crunch, wow. Wow, this is such a wow piece, guys. Oh. I mean, I don't even need presents. This is it. If Santa brought this, I would be one happy girl. Merry Christmas, everyone. Enjoy your beautiful one. <laughs> so there you go guys Merry Christmas I hope that you are keeping safe that you enjoy your families if you're able to see them this Christmas time I have loved having you guys as followers and supporters this year I'm eternally eternally always grateful thank you for a wonderful year and I hope next year is brighter more delicious uh, and more amazing bye Okay guys, so here is your cheats checklist for your Christmas Day spread. The day before, I want you to score and prepare your pork, put the spices on, put the salt on, get it into the fridge. Uh, you can be slicing up all your ingredients for your salad. Don't mix them with the dressing though, but you can mix up the dressing and keep that in your fridge for the next day. You can also prepare your spiced plum sauce, but I want you to keep the plums separate from the syrup itself until you're going to serve. And then Christmas day, all you need to do is cook your pork, mix your salad with the salad dressing and pour your syrup on top of your plums and serve. <laughs>